Hey there everyone, my name is Hitesh and I make coding related videos and in this video I want to explore something together with you. There are a lot of products that comes out day in day out but there are certain ones which actually grabs attention and most commonly the ones which are open source grabs most amount of attention. So that's exactly what I want to do. I want to understand this product, what it is and I actually mentioned this as one of my real and short video as well that this is like Vercel but for backend and for those people who don't understand truly the backend or have never written a production grade backend they think like it's just an express app or maybe a spring boot app but backend is way beyond that the moment you put anything professionally in the production that's it the nightmare begins so in this video we are going to together go ahead and explore an application which is just out there we will explore the its open source repository we will read that why this application exists and how beautifully somebody can write these documentation. I'm super excited to introduce this to you. So welcome to this video and I hope you have already subscribed. If you're, if not, go ahead and do that subscribe. Uh, we really need more subscribers who actually are interested in the tech and the discussion around the tech. That's exactly what we'll be doing. Let me take you onto the screen and first walk you through that why we are exploring this. So in a, any real world application that you have designed, let's just say you are designing a backend. So usually the backend feels just like this, that this is my backend and this backend is going to be talking to some of the database. Uh, let's just say this is my uh, database, which is very small, but this is not usually. And this is usually the thing that, okay, my backend is going to talk to database, database is going to respond me back on to some of the backend. But hear me out on this point. Let's just say your backend is trying to send an email. All right, that's fair. Once what it does, it actually gets a request to register a user. And in order to register a user, this user got here. We registered the user in the database. And after that, we are sending the email. Now, in the meantime, another request comes to our backend and we want to register another user, but this email is still going. The SMTP servers and the emails are relatively slower as compared to your backend, which is usually faster and database also are these days much, much faster. What will happen to this email? What if 10 more people at the immediate time, your app goes viral? So how are you going to send these email? Now, obviously this is one of the tasks where I don't want to keep my backend hanging. So we need some kind of a queuing infrastructure so that these emails can be placed in the queue. And as we get time, we send those emails. Fair uh, choice there. Maybe you want to take some of the backup of this database. Yeah, you need some kind of activities that happens every day. Maybe you want to give summary to of your user that, hey, how did your, how was your day or how was your month? So in that case, you need to run uh, some kind of a cron job. Cron jobs are automatic jobs that runs on certain day, period, time and gap. And you can collect information, some SQL queries, whatever you want to do, you can run on that. So as you can see, just by discussing a brief about it, you realize that backend is not just as... Uh, shiny it looks like it involves a lot of moving part and that is where this application got my attention because they were trending on the github itself and that's where I first found them so you can see this is heavily active just two hours ago there was a pull request being merged so this is heavily actively maintained a uh, package up here and some things which you are going to see that it's definitely Ruby. I get very less chance to talk about the Ruby, but it is heavily on the JavaScript ecosystem, but we have Python equally. What it is, what it does. And I totally understand it. And yeah, this is where they mentioned this is trending repository uh, number one of the day. So when I went onto their website, it was not very clear from this message that polyglot backend framework that unifies API background jobs and AI agents. All right, I got some part of it that API, I do understand background jobs, AI agents, but what is this polyglot backend framework? So it turns out I highly recommend this to any founder and anybody who is doing it. I actually read their manifesto and I will walk you through with these manifesto as well. I have rarely seen somebody doing this manifesto and with this much of documentation, I'll walk you through. So they say that the step is our core primitive and I want to discuss more on this that why they are saying this step is their core primitive. Now, as you can notice here that we have some kind of a regular things that goes on like backend is there, register the user, entry in the database, then email, then maybe get a dashboard. So what you will realize that where we are moving is actually a step based backend that everybody is designing. Let me walk you through how that works. So let's just say this is your first step. 
what you are doing in this first step. First of all, maybe there is a request where you actually filter the things from the body. Maybe a simple get request or a post request. So basically, you go ahead and add user to database. Seems okay. So this is my step one. What happens in the step two? In the step two, maybe I want to send email to this user. So I'll just go ahead and say send email. Now, not only send email, we are adding the user, but maybe some more information is coming up about the user. Maybe his date of birth, maybe resume is also coming up. So in the next step, probably I would love to invoke some of the AI. So maybe we are calling an AI. So AI call uh, along with resume. This is the first thing that came to mind. So along with this, the API call is being made to some AI, OpenAI, Gemini, whatever is the case. Now, once this AI call comes up, then another step is that you want to process all of this data in some kind of a CSV format. I don't know why, but some kind of a CSV format you want to go with that. Now, once this is all done, and by the way, once we add the user, we just return the response back just right from here. We don't wait for the user that uh, all this is happening. So we go ahead and send back the response to the user. So user is happy that, okay, I went up and registration was successful. But behind the scene, you are doing sending of the email. Once the email is being sent, then only I want to uh, do an AI call and then I want to add you to some of the CSV and maybe more things. Can you notice a pattern here? That this is a single step. And that's why they say step is our core primitive. So one of the step is here, another step is here, another step is here. And interestingly, this whole thing might be in TypeScript. But on the other hand, this whole thing of AI calling and everything, this could be in Python. So what do you think? Are too much of frameworks being involved? There could be a case where fast API, express, all these things. But where they come into the picture, they say these are individual steps. We are going to treat them as an individual step itself. Your team can write whatever they wish in TypeScript, whatever they wish in Python or any other language that they support. And this is how we want to go. Now, let's go ahead and together read this because you will understand this, that what they really want to say and why I call them as uh, Vercel for backend. So notice this, drawing inspiration from the power of simple, elegant primitives like React component. Moshe introduces the steps. The core concept distills complexity into four fundamentals, easy to understand. First is trigger. How a step is initiated, why API, event burst, or schedule task. So as we discussed here, an event can be triggered by a variety of things. Maybe a user had made a request to this endpoint, or maybe something else, maybe queue or anything. So anything can actually initiate a step. Now, it's not necessary that you will go ahead and initiate this very first step. You could have initiated this step also. That's totally fine and totally possible. When we receive, when we receive the input data, as in our very first example, we added the user, so we extract some of the data, maybe resume or something or their information. Then activate. How it performs logic or an action. This is purely, purely your code. TypeScript, Python, JavaScript, whatever you wish. This is your business logic which you write. And finally, emit. How it optionally outputs data or triggers in other steps. Notice here. So once you have added this, the user, you can actually return the email of the user so that this send email, once it receives the email, it can send this email to this user. And this can actually trigger a true point that only if we have sent the user, I'm returning you back a true. And this step will automatically receive the data from the above step. And then we can make an AI call. So I hope now you can see that how these all things are making sense and why they are calling that step is our core primitive. So this is the thing that I liked. And again, we have 25 years of knowledge of event base and microservices. We don't knew the new connection and all of that. So beautifully written this whole thing. Now, I hope this makes much more sense that why this is happening. I would love to read a little bit more paragraph of it. I won't be reading the whole point of it, uh, but just a couple of things. So notice here, Moshe exists to unify all of these components, API endpoints, the schedule task, the background jobs, the message queue, whatever you do is just a step. And workflow orchestration in a single coherent system and with the shared observability and developer experience. So this is what I like. There is a little bit more, uh, not much, but just a tiny bit more I want to read so that you can actually understand the power of how it's being done. So notice here, this is the part where I want to directly jump and read this. So from Express or Flask, API endpoint with routing and middleware, but no built-in background job process or schedule. 
So you need separate tools for doing all these things. We have Express, we have Flask, we have Fast API, but for queue, we need some kind of a queue mechanism. Uh, that can be BullMQ, or you might be using Amazon Q, whatever you're using, that's fine. And you also need uh, traditional cron jobs. Cron are really most important thing. They take the database backups and whatnot, and your point in time recovery, a lot of things are done. And then maybe you want to make more calls to AI engines, and they also take their own time to get you the response back and a whole lot of thing. So Moshe is designed to miss that filling piece. It provides a unified backend framework that replaces the need to write uh, or have an interaction with multiple tools. And what I really like about it, although they call themselves as a framework, but I think they are not framework. We need to discover a new word for this because what they allows us is, if you look into their docs, is you just write your steps. So this is how you define, they mentioned this, I'll walk through more of the videos. So you just write your steps and you can write your steps in any language you have. So how is this a framework? You can write in TypeScript and JavaScript and Python, whatever you wish. All you have to do is just this config, this much it, that is it. And you can do exactly same thing here as well. So I don't think framework actually justifies them, but I don't know what else to call it. But the whole point of these kinds of application is that the whole thing that how we used to do the development in a traditional way is actually transforming. And the reason why this repository was whole trending is actually a proof of concept that the whole ecosystem is now changing instead of writing the whole traditional thing. Maybe very soon people will be writing in whatever the language they prefer and they will just focus on writing my step. Still, you also do that. You just focus on writing the controller and where that controller is going to be served, the route of it. And surely there are middlewares and other stuff, but I think this is another way of thinking how I'm going to write my application and especially the backend part of it. I really, really like. And welcome to Moshe and all of that. You can just go and work more of it. I will go ahead. Oh, that's, this is a beautiful diagram. So if you look onto this, this is just a primitive step that can do uh, all of things. It can serve API endpoints, it can do the background jobs, AI agents, fault tolerance, observability, single deployment, that's that's huge. So I would definitely prefer to make more a video on it in the future and uh, really good, good stuff. And I highly recommend you to go out and check their open source repository as well. There is so much to learn from this. Even if you just explore there, just the playground part of it, the way how they have executed the playground and there is so much to learn uh, within their YAML files. Amazing infrastructure that they, by the way, they offer the Docker as well. Probably in the next video, we'll play around with their Docker ecosystem and we'll try to self-deploy it. So that's it. This was more of an introduction video that how things actually are transforming and how the new players are coming in the market that are challenging the traditional way of designing the application. Hope this was interesting for you uh, because it was for very much interesting for me. And I build, I create more such kind of videos which are interesting new tech. Uh, sometimes we do the whole full backend ecosystem and traditional applications and tutorial as well. That is it for this video. Let's catch up in the next video and explore it a little bit more.